Hi, welcome to Movie 2. We're going to use the same file, except I've already gone ahead and saved as and changed the name of this. And I actually saved it as, you'll see it in a second, um, Sorial Portfolio. And I put it into a folder that's all by itself. And I'll show you that folder in a minute because I want to actually show you the end result. So I'm going to hit cancel here because I've already saved it as my name underscore portfolio. Try to keep it real concise. No long names and no spaces in the name. Okay. So I'm going to hit cancel because I've already saved it. You would hit save. Okay. I'm going to hide Photoshop for a second because there's something that I definitely want you to see. Now, what I've done is this is named web route old folder because this is what happens. And now this is what happens when you save a file from Photoshop and get it ready. Um, or you create the HTML for hypertext markup language page. Okay. So I'm going to open up the portfolio page in a web browser right now by double clicking it and you can see it right there. I've actually given it an extra um, gray on the outside by inserting a code into the web page code which is easy to do and you'll see how easy it is to do but I want you to see how this web page actually opens up into um, what we call a series of GIF images. All right now to prove that um, that and this is kind of what I want to prove to you. So I'm going to close this and I'll do this hopefully quickly. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up this images folder because I didn't make that images folder. Photoshop did. Okay. So I'm going to open it up and you can see inside of here where it actually has all of these GIF, G I F images. Okay. And like I said, I didn't make them, but they were made because I sliced up the Photoshop page. So here is what we refer to as the normal state of things right there. So I can click on it and show you there's a normal state of whatever that was. And then if that was number 41, here is the over state of number 41. So it says the word over, but this is what I want to show you more than that. These two files, the HTML files, are really blank files. They use all the pictures inside that images folder. Now to prove it, I'm going to take it away from that folder and put it over here on the desktop. See what I did? Now I'm going to double click this and it's not going to remember what it's supposed to be because it can't find any of those GIF images. So if you can see this on the screen, each one of these little squares is a GIF image that I created that you will create. All right. Now watch what happens when I close this page again and minimize the screen. Okay. And put this images folder back in my web route folder. Um, I'm going to move it right back in there. Now, when I open it up again, there is the page because it relies, it links to the images folder. So just want you to know that I have a dedicated folder called web route folder. So I'm going to make a new one. For you today. I'll make it when I actually save the file. Okay. And I'm going to make a new page, but I'm going to double click this again because I want you to see that not only am I making this portfolio page, but I'm going to actually click the photography button. I'm not going to fill up these other images here with pictures. Okay. This is just my old one. So I'm going to now click this and it goes to a photography page and I'm actually going to put the original on this page as well. But the only thing that actually works on this page that I, I cause I just didn't feel like making this upper title bar work is, um, the back button that I just clicked. These actually have rollover states and normal states up here in the white title bar, but they don't click to anything because I didn't insert the link to where they're supposed to link in Dreamweaver, which you'll see in a little while in movie three, how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to minimize this screen and I'm going to go back one in my folder and I'm going to double click the portfolio again to open it up. Now my job is to slice up this page and I'm going to use a tool that's located in the cropping tool. There's two of them. There's a slice tool, which I make slices with. Then there's a slice select tool, which I have to select slices with. So I have to switch back and forth between these two. Now I want you to see how there's actually, um, a tear off. There should be a tear off right here. Um, 
there's no tear off. Um, there should have been a tear off inside of there so I could just have this as torn. Oh, that's probably it right there. Uh, no. Let me see if I can tear that off. You used to be able to tear this off. Let me um, go into the marquee tool and see. Okay, well, they don't have the tear offs anymore, but that's okay. Because I'll just keep on going up here and going down from the slice tool, which is the C key, to the slice select tool. So let's start with the slice tool. All right. In order to do this right, um, I have to um, view my page. Okay, and there's two states that a web page uses that we're going to use. One is called a normal state. So what does that mean? Well, that means when you open up a web page, all of the things that you see should be in the preliminary um, visibility or view before you actually would roll over your mouse over the words. So I'm going to hit the V key. All right, and you can see the white word Photoshop that I want to turn off. Now, how do I get to that layer real fast? Because I want to turn it off. Well, I'm going to go and use the move tool and a right hand click. And you see how it takes me right to that Photoshop RO for rollover? Now, see how it opened up the folder? I can just turn it off. Okay, now I'm going to go to this one here and it's going to show me where it is inside of here. So you can see that I want to turn off all of these here that are the rollovers. So starting with photography, I'm just going to move up to image manipulation. Watch it over here. Watch 3D textures. I'm going to turn off all the rollover states. Why am I doing this? Because I want to create what is called a layer comp and I'll explain that in two seconds. See how long it's taking me to turn off everything? Well, that's very inconvenient. What if I had 20 or 30 web pages that I wanted to do here? Okay. Um, I also want to turn off, you see the drop shadow behind the photography button? You see the drop shadow? I want to turn that off. So I'm going to turn off all the drop shadows on all of them, starting with the one on the lower right, working my way back to the photography one. So, because that's at the bottom. And you see how by color coding the layer palette, do you see how real convenient it was to find everything? Okay. I'm going to check. All right, the last thing I have to turn off is the black home. So in the move tool, I right hand click. It goes right to that. And you can see here how I can turn that off. Now there, there is my normal state. Now, I want you to open up in window layer comps. Okay, we're going to make two layer comps. One is going to say normal state. And I'm going to click a certain button here to actually memorize it. So let's go over here and go to new layer comp and let's go to normal state. No need to put in a space. But I want to have visibility and I want to have layer comp selection for smart objects. No, appearance. So I want um, uh, visibility and appearance. Okay, I don't really need the other two because I'm not moving anything. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Now look at down here in my layer comp window how I have a normal state. Now I'm going to click this button here to make sure that it's on and you see this double headed circle here. I'm going to hold this over here and you're going to see that says update layer comp. Okay, I'm going to click it. Boom. Now that layer comp has actually um, memorized everything that I've turned off and on. Okay, that's very important. Now, manually, I'm going to make another one. So I'm going to click away from that one and I'm going to go to a new layer comp and I'm going to say um, rollover or um, uh, what did I say? Um, normal state and um, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I'll just say rollover and it'll, uh, I'll, I'll go back and rename it. But rollover state is fine. It could be overstate, rollover state, whatever you want here. And I should take the space away. Sorry about that. So let me click that. And now this is just for me. It's not for anything. And I'm going to leave on visibility and appearance. It does, that name of that isn't super important as long as I know what the heck is going on. Okay. Now, see how I'm clicked on the rollover state? All right. So I'm going to start now turning everything on. And each time I get through a little section, I'm going to update it by clicking that button. Okay, that's very important. 
okay? So I'm going to start with turning on all of the upper things. So everything that says rollover, contact rollover, look at what I'm doing, work rollover, services rollover, about rollover, and home rollover. Now I'm gonna update it by clicking that so I don't have to redo it in case I make a mistake. And I just did. I clicked the update. Now let's go down and turn on the white versions of all work Photoshop and Illustrator. So let's turn on the rollover for Illustrator, the rollover for Photoshop, and the rollover for all work. Now we update it again. So keep on updating so you don't lose what you've done because it's very easy to mess up this window. Now I want to go in, as soon as I can find it, I'm gonna close the side buttons. I'm gonna close the title bars and now I can go in and I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. So I turn on the drop shadow and I turn on the overstate, okay? I turn on the eyeball for the drop shadow for image manipulation, right here, the second one on the left, and turn on the overstate. So let's keep on going, Brian. Just keep your eye on the ball here and Every time, uh, when I get finished, I meant, because I'm concentrating on this, um, I'm going to click the update button. And then I'm going to show you how important knowing layer comps um, is. I don't know if I said that right. I'm going to show you how important understanding and making layer states, okay, or layer comps. Now, quickly click the update button. Now, watch this. I can click the icon to the left of normal state. Let me see if I can make those icons bigger. Layer comp options, just because I want them, no. Oh, it's visibility. I don't think I can make that any bigger. Let me see, I can't. Okay, layer, nope, I can't. Usually you can make um, the icons bigger inside if you want to, but because it's so small on screen. So watch the screen right now. I'm gonna click the normal state now everything turned to the normal state. See how one click did that? And now I'm gonna click the icon to the left of the rollover state and see how now it's all on. So off, I'm sorry, off or normal, on or rollover, and I'm saving the file. Now that's before I even do anything with my slice tool. So now I wanna slice up the top. So I'm gonna hold Alt, Option or Alt and zoom in and we're going to start creating what is referred to as user slices. There is, um, once I make a user slice, the rest of the slices around it will be non-user slices, but they will be different color, they'll be gray. And the color for the user slice used to be blue. So let me see if that's gonna just show it, well, you'll see in a second. So I'm gonna go into the crop tool, right? And go to slice tool. Now I'm going to, make a box around the word home. You see how I did that, okay? And I wanna make sure that the box encompasses anything that might be a drop shadow, since there aren't any, I don't have to worry about it. But now do you see how that that item right there, look, I'm getting close, is now, it's got blue. See how the non-user slices are gray? All right, now what I wanna do is switch to the, uh, I wanna see if I have to. Um, just a minute, I'm gonna see if I have to. No, I don't have to. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna come control Z back. I can stay in the slice tool. And since I've made a slice for the word home, I now want to copy it. But I'm gonna use that same trick I told you about. Okay, so here's how we do it. I'm gonna stay in the slice tool, hold option or alt, okay, and click and hold. Then I'm gonna add shift to it and slide over to this side. Look at how now I have a second slice around the word about, which is about, but I'm Canadian. So now I do the same thing. I'm in the slice tool, I hold option or alt, click, hold my mouse, add the shift key, and now I can go here and watch how I can grab this icon on the left, the bounding box icon, and make it bigger. So it encompasses the word services, okay. Let's move over. I'm gonna save the file. So I'm gonna save it after every few moments, okay? Because I don't wanna get burned if Photoshop quits. So I hold Alt or Option, click, Shift key. Now we have to make this one smaller. Look at how I can grab this. It changes automatically. I'm not doing anything to make it change. I'm not holding Shift. I'm not holding anything. Now I have the word work surrounded by a slice. So 
one more time, hold alt or option, click, hold shift, and put it over the word contact, and now we go like this. Now, um, I'm not, there's no specific measurement that I care about these slices with, but you have to realize that when you're in the web page, and listen to me carefully, you want the, you know when you're in a web page how it turns to a little hand with a finger on it when it rolls over something? Well, that's the boundary that it's going to have. So if I make this too big, then um, I may be thinking I'm clicking on work, do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm really clicking on contact. Do you, do, so make sure you um, surround whatever you're doing with an appropriate size element. Okay, now let's go down to all work because these are three buttons. So I'm going to now re-slice this for all work. Look at how cool that is. And I'm going to um, not make it come close to the word Photoshop. So I'm going to actually do a little customization right there. Now, again, hold Alt or Option, click and hold, hold Shift and slide it over. And now let's make this big enough for the word Photoshop. Now, let me move over with the space bar, right? hold alt or option, click and hold, hold shift, and now separate the word Illustrator from the word Photoshop, and now I'll custom fit it right there. So do you see how, now I'm gonna uh, actually select this slice right here, and to select it, I actually have to click on the edge of it. Do you see how I clicked on the edge um, of it? So I can go up and I can, um, now to do that, I have to tell you what I did. So remember I'm in the slice tool and please remember that there is a slice select tool. So if you're in the slice tool and you hold the command or control key, it actually changes to the slice select tool. Do you follow what I'm saying? So I don't have to physically switch to those. If I want to, I can, all right? but you make slices with the slice tool, you select slices with the slice select tool, which is just, if I'm in the slice tool, <clears throat> I'm holding down command or control. Now, the reason I did that is because I want to make this a little bit smaller around the word Photoshop and I'm saving the file. Now let's go make the slices for the word for the photography. Okay, so I have to make a big slice and make sure that I get it big enough to incorporate the drop shadow, okay? Because the drop shadow is gonna be on or the drop shadow is gonna be off, all right? Now, um, I should have clicked to the normal state. I will in a minute because I'm not doing anything with this, I'm meaning I'm not saving any of the GIF images yet, but I'm gonna save the file just to make sure. So I'm in the slice tool. Look, I'm gonna make a huge slice around the word photography, but just making sure that I get the drop shadow and the bottom of the word. So that was important. I am way too big on top. And I'm going to go to the left side and custom fit it right there. I think that's pretty good. See, if I move in, do you see how I've actually incorporated the drop shadow? Okay, now let's now either move to the left or right or the top or bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the option key, which is the alt key, click and hold, hold shift and slide it over for image manipulation, which I am going to have to make wider. So you can see right now, boom, I made it wider. Let's slide over with the space bar, save the file. Yes, I'm saving it after every single one, kind of. And I'm gonna hold alt or option, click and hold anywhere, hold shift and slide it over and now custom fit 3D textures. And now this button is way too wide, but don't come close, Brian, to your drop shadow. Spacebar, click and hold, slide it over, save the file, okay? Hold Alt or Option, click and hold, hold Shift and slide it over for the last one for caricature. And there it is. And I actually want to move it over a little bit. So let's just surround this with a little bit better feel. I don't have enough of the drop shadow. See how picky I'm being? Save the file. Now, I could, if I wanted to, instead of just copying one slice, and I'm not naming them, they're naming themselves in order, okay? That's important, please. I'm gonna select all of these slices, all four, and I'm gonna try to copy them down for the bottom ones, and then I'll be done with making my slices, right? Right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is hold the finger on the command key or the control key and click this slice right here. 
Now I'm going to shift click this, whoops, I'm sorry, click this slice right here. <laughs> there isn't any slice down there yet. Okay, let me start over. Uh -huh. Okay, so I, okay, I'm in the slice tool. Sorry, I'm going to start over. I'm holding my command or control key and I'm clicking. Now I'm going to add the shift key to the command or control key and click that slice and click that slice and click that slice. Now, I'm going to let go of everything. I'm going to hold my finger on the Option key or the Alt key. Click in that slice, hold the Shift key, and now all four slices move down. And I want to make sure that I leave a little tiny space between the other ones. And let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. See how I've left a little teensy-weensy space between the slices. Okay, I think that's important. And now they fit actually really good. Um, hard surface product is surrounded, movie poster is surrounded, and tear sheet is surrounded. That's perfect. I'm going to save the file. Okay, now we actually have to make that folder the web route folder. By me saving this in the proper way for the web page, it's going to make its own images folder as long as I name everything correctly. Do you understand? Okay. So we're actually going to use this page to create the photography page, which I hasn't even done. So I'm going to show you actually how to get rid of all the slices that you should get rid of, but keep a few that are kind of cool. Okay. So that's going to be kind of neat. Um, to, 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 to use what we've already done is going to be easier than starting over. Okay. To make the, where the photography page links to, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So let's now start making the folder. So I'm going to click to the normal state icon. See this layer comp window? I'm clicking to the normal state icon. Now, I can save this as soon as I check, make sure everything is in the normal state. Cool. Okay, I save it again. Now, I'm going to go to File. Um, I have to remember where they put it because they actually moved it. Um, okay, it's under Export. So please go there and save for legacy, save for web legacy. Okay. Now I'm going to show you cause I know the quick key it's, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's command option shift. Um, it's yeah, it's, um, command option shift S now on a PC, it would be control alt shift S. So, um, that, when I'm doing a lot of web pages, I don't feel like going up to this here and then down to this here. I know I'm making a big deal over this, but let me go into this window. Now, don't let this window freak you out, okay? And before I go into the window, I'm going to double check and make sure everything is right on the page. Yes, I'm in the normal state. Cool. I'll go do it again. I know I'm picking on this, but that's the way it goes. So in this window, you can minimize, see how I can use my option middle mouse button like this if it's way too big like this go option or alt middle mouse button and zoom out now i want you right away to not touch anything that's in any of the settings except would you please click to the original tab thank you please click to the original tab now we are going to use this upper tool, which it should already be selected on, and make a big box around all of the um, GIF, uh, all of the, the entire page. So now every single slice is selected. Do you understand? Now again, don't touch anything, but hit save. Now in the save window, we are going to save, um, there's a thing that we can save in three different ways, okay? This time I want you to save HTML and images. Okay, so um, definitely save HTML and images. So it'll not only make the HTML file, but it'll make an images folder. Now, before I do that, I need to make a new folder. See this button on the bottom left? I need to make a web route folder. Now I'm going to name it, um, I'm going to go web, so I know which one it is. I'm going to go web route folder uh, winter 2021, just so I know it's the right folder. So let me go very slowly, web route folder, no spaces, underscore winter 
2021. Now, um, if I were to upload this to the internet, I would have to take away the winner 2021 and the underscore. Okay, so the web route folder, which all browsers know what to do with, uh, would just be the words web route folder. Do you follow what I'm saying? So now I'm creating it. Okay, now I can hit save. Am I making sure that I selected everything? Look, yes, I selected everything in the window back there. I named it Sorial. Um, this should be saying, um, this should not be saying GIF. It should be saying HTML. So I need to see, oh, I know what it is all slices. Okay, that was very important. So I need to make sure that it's not only on selected slices. Um, you know what? I am going to make it on selected slices. Okay, yes, because I've selected all the slices. That's important. So it's going to save HTML and images and let me hit save. Okay, now I'm going to hide Photoshop and check if I did the right thing. Okay, so here is should be a web route folder. I probably didn't put it in the right place. Let me see web route folder. Let me see if there's one there today. Okay, where did I put it? Hold on. Okay, I located my folder and I did a dumb thing. I when I was in that save as window in Photoshop, I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, just um, and I don't mind making mistakes in front of you. I had to locate this folder, this web route folder. I'm going to double click it now, but I want you to know exactly where you put your web route folder. I just wasn't concentrating on the window, and you can see how quickly a mistake can be made. But it wasn't a mistake. I just couldn't find it. Okay, so inside now, I'm going to open this up, and you're going to see that I have all of these regular images. One to number 48. They're just the way the page was sliced up. So this is telling me there are 48 GIF images in the page. Here's what the page looks like. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Here's what the page actually looks like right now, but nothing will work and it's going to be shoved all the way to the upper left. See this big white area? It's kind of what I wanted you to see, but I'm checking to make sure that there's no iffies or no missed anythings. And there's not. It's all perfect. Now we're going to make this actually move over in the web browser by um, editing uh, or changing the code, which is not a big deal. It really isn't. Don't be afraid of that. So I'm going to close this and we're going to go back to the Photoshop page. Okay. See this nice gray that I had around here? Well, that's what we're going to do. Okay. So um, uh, let's go ahead. Let me close that thought I closed it. And let's minimize this. Now let's go back into Photoshop and continue. Okay. So on all of these pages, if I zoom to the bottom of this, you can't read that, but that says number 48. So this last non-user slice is actually number 48 GIF. So there's 48 little images in this window. I'm hopefully I'm not picking on that too much, but here we go. Okay, so now this next part is going to be the over states or the rollover states. So don't just click in your layer comp window to the name. You have to click to that icon. Now we're ready. Okay, so I'm going to save the file one more time. Now let's go to where was it? File, export, save for legacy. And now in this window, again, click to original, please. Now this is going to be a little harder. Okay, we have to select, manually select all of the slices that we know are actually going to be user slices. And we have to hold the shift key as we do it. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to let you see something over here. Uh, can I make that window wider? Yes, I can. Okay, so that's cool. So I'm going to make it wide as I can on this window there. Now, wasn't that neat? Okay, so they did it so because they know your pages are awful funny. But in this size, look at how I can click on the first one, home. Okay, hold the shift key, Brian, and click on about, services, work, contact, all work, Photoshop, Illustrator, photography, image manipulation, 3D textures, character. I'm holding the shift key. Organic object, hard surface product, movie poster and T 
tear sheet. Okay, so that's what I want to do. That's what I want to use. Okay, now let me check everything out. Brian, do you have all the slices? The answer is yes, I do. Now let's save it. And in this window, make sure you're on the original tab. Don't change anything over to the right here and just click save. Now we are going to make sure what now change this. We don't want, um, we don't want an HTML file. We already have one. So all we're going to do is go to images. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now we are going to put this, we are going to go to underscore over. So these are going to be the over states. Again, please put in your, don't change the title at all. Just add an underscore O-V-E-R lowercase and leave the file. It doesn't matter if it says HTML, it's going to make images only, GIF images. So now I click save. Now it went into the proper file, okay, and all I have to do, hopefully it went into the proper file, and now all I have to do is hide, fo uh, save Photoshop. I should have checked. You know what? I didn't check again. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did that. Okay, so um, let me see if the overstates are in here. And oh my gosh, they're not. Okay, I'll fix that. Okay, I know where they went. Ugh, I'm so embarrassed. I know where they went. <laughs> So I'm going to throw them away and redo the process, which isn't bad for you to see me redo it and make sure I'm saving into the right file. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. So I know that it went into this thing called test right there. And um, I'm just going to uh, just leave this alone because that's an old one. Okay, so I'm going to go forward with this. Okay, back to Photoshop. Gosh, I'm so embarrassed, but I'm not really. Okay, so what I need to do here is make sure, Brian, are you in the overstate? Yes. So I can go back to saving. This won't even take but a second, but I'm just embarrassed that I did that. So here we go. I have to now reselect everything. So I'm zooming in on the page. Okay, so one more time, click home, shift click about, services. Whoops, I need to go to the original tab. Whoops, I made a mistake. Okay, so click to the original tab, home, about, services, work, contact, um, all work, Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Photography, Image Manipulation, 3D Textures, Character, Organic, Hard Surface, Movie Poster, <sighs> Tear Sheet. Now, do you have them all selected, Brian? The answer is yes. Hit Save. Now, let's make sure this next window is the right window. It is not. Okay, so I have to locate where I'm putting this. I'm in Images Only. Can't believe I did that twice. Um, underscore Over. Okay, but don't just hit save, Mr. Sorial. Find where your images are. So I go to, this is gonna take a second because I have, it's um, very deep inside my computer. So I should have done this a long time ago. I am so sorry that I have, that I'm going through this, but this is okay. This is what happens when you sometimes are doing a tutorial that you just have your mind on other things. So here is my folder for the web assets. Here is a folder that I created for this winter 2020. Now, um, it's in this folder. See, it's very far, right? So if I just click once on this folder that you saw me made, once, web route folder underscore winter 2021. And see over here, if you can, there's only one HTML page, which is good. I'm gonna hit save. And now I'm gonna save the file. Let's go to hide Photoshop and I'm going to show you that in this web route folder that we just made, look at how one through 48 here, and then we have all of those overstates right here. Okay. Now nothing is going to work yet. Okay. So I keep on doing that. I should actually double click that. But when I open this up, not nothing works. I have to go into Dreamweaver and make it work. That's why it's going to take a whole movie to show you, but it's fun. I actually like doing it. Okay, so now I'm going to close this page and we are going to go do the photography one, which shouldn't take long. So let's go back into Photoshop. Let's save as on this page. Now, 
for um for a minute i'm going to um um i don't want to see the slices just for a minute so i can go to um not show extras so i'm going to which is control h or command h i'm going to turn it off because i don't want to see them yet if i wanted to see them i would hit command h or control h right Okay, so that's fine. Just like I can go command semicolon to show the guides or control semicolon. So now I'm turning that off. Okay, so let's go to save as and we're going to name this photography PSD. Okay, perfect. Save it. Done. Now, I don't need half this stuff. Okay, I am going to keep everything on the top and the nice part here is that all the rollovers are still going to work. I'll have to link them, but they're still going to work because I have the slices already made for them. All right, but I don't need any of these buttons now. None of them. Okay, and I'll steal a word over here and put it somewhere else. So. Look what I'm going to do here, and I know it's scary, but I'm going to take all of these buttons and turn them off. I'm even going to throw the buttons away. Oh my gosh. Now, I'm going to go hit the V key, right hand click to all work. Look at that. And I'm going to take um, all work. Look at how I'm clicking the first one, holding the shift key and clicking the next one, the next one, and the next one because they're in order. And I'm throwing those away because I don't need them. Okay, now this one, I want it to say the word back. So let's zoom in. Alt or Option, middle mouse button, zoom in. Now, I'm going to actually align this to this box here. So I am going to hit Command or Control, semicolon, because I want the K on the word back to be where the R is here, you follow? So I'm going to turn off the top one, and I'm going to double click the bottom one and put B, a C K. Now I'm going to hit the move tool or the check mark, right? Right? I can't just hit the return key. And in the move tool, I'm going to click and hold. And I'll, in fact, I'll do them at the same, I'm going to move them at the same time so they're in the same place. Okay, cool. So I'm going to turn on the other one. I'm going to double click it and type the word back and hit the check mark. Now they're both in the same place. See, wasn't that convenient? Now I'm going to shift click both. So in the move tool, when I click and hold and hold shift, they both move over to there. And that's what I wanted. Okay. Now let's go into and turn on this. And let's say that this is my photography page. So however you want to do it, that's how I'm going to do this one. Okay, so let's go to, I'm going to keep the title on this one, I think. So let's go to here and say, uh, photography page. Let's just say photography. That's good. That's fine. Now, I want to center that. So I'm going to hit control T. Now, I can click, hold the shift key and slide this over. That kind of moved on me, didn't it? Click, hold the shift key, uh, but it, it's moving, but it's fine. And now I have that centered very nicely. I'll hit the return key and um, make sure that I saved this correctly. And I did, so I have it saved. So it's, um, it's the, I wanna make sure the other one is still here. So let's go to here and let's go to Sorial Portfolio to make sure that's all there, all right? Good, yes, and let me hit Command H or Control H, yes. So now I can just hit Control or Command tilde to go to my other tab, and now I'm back in. So now I want to take, um, and I want to put the original over here and use a copy of this, except I only need one word original. So I'm gonna take the blue one over here, which is this one right here, I turned off the top one. You see how I turned it off, right? Take the move tool, hold the alt or option key, and this time don't hold shift. I'm gonna put it back here and I'm gonna hit the T key and we're gonna type in original. R-I-G-I-N-A-L. And I'm just gonna leave it down here until I get the original picture in here. Believe it or not, we're almost done with this one, okay? So 
now I need the pictures. I need both pictures. So I'm going to hide Photoshop just for a second. Over here, I put the pictures on my desktop. Here is the face original. Here is the face that we fixed. Okay, so here's the original and the fixed one. I'm going to shift click both of them and open them in Photoshop. So I shift click both, right hand click, open with Photoshop. Now let's just leave it that size. I don't need to make it any bigger. This is the original, right? This is the original. So just because I, and I'm not going to save this file, I want you to see what I'm doing. I want you to see the original. So I'm going to double click this and name it original. So when I put it into the other file, it says original. Now, how do you get it there? You right hand click, you duplicate the layer here. You right hand click in the gray area, you duplicate the layer and you go to the photography PSD. Now I can close this control W or command W and don't save Brian. Now let's go in here and say um, that this is the um, edited or finish or whatever you want to say. So now I right hand click and I change it to the photography page. I hit control W or command W and I don't save. Now I have both pictures in there. Okay. They just happen to be on top of each other. So I'm going to take the original and have it be the top one. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to take the edited one and hit the V key and put it over here and shrink it. So I'm going to hit control T on it. Now again, hold the shift key if you want to keep the right proportion. If you have Photoshop 2020 or earlier, if you have Photoshop 2021, don't hold any key down and just let's just resize it. And we're going to throw a drop shadow on that. Now, do you see how I put it right in there? A little bit bigger, Mr. Sorio, a little bit bigger, like right there. And now I have it exactly where I want. Hit the return key, go to the FX right here and choose drop shadow. Now, I'm going to look at the drop shadow. Yeah, that's fine. See how the drop shadow is coming off a little bit. I want that opacity up a little bit. And then I want to use the size menu here to just feather it out a little bit. Okay. And then I want to make sure it's a good black. So I clicked the color tab. I'm going to go to the lower right and now I have a nice color tab and I'm going to click OK. So I have to move this over and click OK and save my file. Now I want the original. So I click it on. Now I hit control T or command T. Whoops. <laughs> Look what I did. Remember I told you in Photoshop, the first rule is select your layer first. Well, you just saw Brian make that mistake. How many times will I do it a day? 128 million. So no, about four or five. So let's go um, control T or command T. Now I can shrink this. And now I'm going to ask for this. I'll put it right here. You can see it's real nice right there. It's not in the way. You can still see the size and everything's cool. So I'm going to hit control or command semicolon to turn off the guides and I'm going to zoom in. Okay. I'm going to hit the V key, right hand click on the name down here. So the layer went to that layer and I'm going to move this up and just place it underneath. Now, these two pictures don't separate very well. So I want to put a light stroke around this at about two points in thickness, but I don't want to put the stroke on this picture. Okay. But I want to use the edge of the picture to create a selection. So I'm going to control or command click on the icon right here. And now do you see how there is a selection around that? But I don't want to put it on that layer. So I'm making a new layer and I'm going to say original stroke. And I'm going to choose a color in the foreground color, which is going to be a lighter color like this. And now remember when I said the foreground color takes precedence? Well, when I go to edit stroke, I actually want to put a color that's in the foreground color. See it? It's the same color. See it? It says three pixels. 
I might leave it at three pixels and say, okay, two or three pixels is fine. Now, if I deselect, do you see the stroke? And you know what? It is too wide. So I'm gonna control Z back, my, and one more control Z back, or command Z back, sorry. And let's go now make this two pixels. I should have done that. My instinct was good. I'll leave it at, in the center, and there it is. Now I'll deselect by control D or command D, and now do you see how I have a stroke on top of the picture? And if I go down in size like this, do you see how nicely that actually separates that? It was just enough to make it nicely separated. Now if I wanted to, I could put a much lighter stroke around this one. That might be nice. How about I see if that works? So I'm gonna put a layer above it and I'm gonna double click edited and hit copy. Click here and hit paste. And let's say stroke here. Now, let's also put a, um, a more grayed off stroke. So I'm gonna go down here and just get a little bit darker gray stroke. Now, how do I do it again? I wanna put it on the new layer, right? But I hold Control or Command and I make a selection by clicking on that picture in the layer palette. Now you see the selection, right? Now am I clicked on, I'm following my own rule, am I clicked on the edited stroke layer, Brian? Yes, you are. Did I change the foreground color? Yes, I did. It's on two. And now let me hit Control D to deselect, and you can see how now that looks kind of nice. I'm just gonna leave it, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hit Control S to save the file. Now we're ready to go um, slice this page up. Now, I am going to show, I'm just thinking what I wanna do here. So I'm gonna close everything, I like everything that's there, Okay, everything that's there. And now, again, I need to make two layer comps. All right, but these are gonna be quick. All right, so I want the home ones to work. So I have to go in and turn off. I'm gonna turn off home. I'm doing this, the, I, I'm not gonna tell you what I was gonna say. I'm just gonna turn off all of the rollover states. See how I'm turning them off? Okay, cool. Now let's go to the back button, wherever I put that side buttons, side buttons I said, and let's go to back, there it is, right there. So, um, where is my other back button? Oh, you know what, I got rid of it. So I'm gonna zoom in, I didn't even realize I got rid of it. So I have to put a back button on there. Um, can, did I actually get rid of it? Yes, I made a mistake, but watch how easy I can fix it. I'm gonna take the back button and put it into the new layer icon, right? And I'm gonna change the word copy for roll over, right? Hit the return key, Brian. Go to the character palette, correct? I'm in the move tool, that's important. I can click this color tab, move it all the way to the upper left, and now I have fixed my boo-boo and I have it. So I'm gonna leave it off for the moment. Okay, cool. Now. Um, do mistakes happen? Oh my gosh. Let me tell you. Just get through them, okay? Now, see how we have a normal state and an overstate? I can use those, all right, to click this, and I can actually now update it. So, all I have to do is look here. In the normal state, look at how everything up there is perfect. Even the back button is in the normal state of it. You follow what I'm saying? So all I have to do is turn on this, turn on this, turn on this, and turn on that, the strokes and the pictures. Now, how do I memorize that? Well, I click the update button. Now, when I click to the rollover state and the normal state, do you see how that is perfect? Okay, that is very perfect. Now, let's click to the rollover state. I have to turn them on again. But by clicking down there already, because I already did this in the last file, now everything is on on the top. Look at how even the back button is on. Look at, if I click the normal state, 
the back button is blue. If I click the rollover state, it's white. It's perfect. So now all I have to do is turn on, 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 and do what? Yes, click the update button. And now I have that updated. So here is the normal state. Here's the rollover state. So let's put it on normal state and slice it up. But Brian, you already did slice it up. Oh, then all I have to do is keep the slices I want and get rid of the slices that I don't want. Is that correct? Yes. So I'm going to switch to the slice select tool. Now, by me just clicking on it, do you see how the slices magically appeared? Isn't that cool? So I don't have to touch home about services work or contact, but I'm going to zoom into this. I don't want that slice. So I click it and hit delete. Click this one and hit delete. Click on this one and custom fit it more for the word back. Now, we don't want this slice, delete. This slice, delete. This slice, delete. This slice, delete. This one, delete. This one, delete. Those are for the old buttons, right? And now I have it done. Wasn't that incredibly fast? Control S or Command S to save the file. Now we can save the page and we're almost done with this. Okay, and then movie three happens and you will see how we actually fix this. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking here. Okay, so I'm in the normal state. I've clicked the button. I've hit Control S or Command S to save the file. I'm checking my file to make sure everything is in the normal state. Let's go to File Export for Legacy. Let's click what? Yes, click the original tab. Let's marquee the whole thing so all of the things are selected. Now, we click Save. Now, this is the initial one. So we have to make the HTML and images. And it's just going to say, for me, sorielphotography.html or sorielphotography, and it'll put a number in for the GIF. Am I in the right folder? Yes, I have selected that silly folder so it goes into the images folder and in a second or two you're going to see another HTML page not just this one so uh, I have to cancel that because by me clicking it it changed the name up here so I'm going to cancel that all right so now let's go back and click this window let me um, marquee everything again all right that's what happens when you do a tutorial and hit save and let's make sure that it says HTML and images and the word photography. I won't go clicking around anything, I promise. So now I'm in the right folder and I hit save. And this window is going to come up periodically. I don't want to tell you what a spacer GIF is except to say it's a default, almost invisible file that should there be any spaces in an HTML file between the GIF images, did you understand what I meant? Like little white cracks. That actually fills them in and that's a decent explanation maybe not a perfect one but let me um, replace that and now we're done with that now if I hide Photoshop real quick you can see that there's another one look at how there's an HTML for for the photography too as well and it'll open up if I double click it again you can see how it opens up right there again it has all this big white area and it's shoved all the way to the left we're gonna fix that okay so let me minimize that or close this and let's go back into Photoshop and finish our job so now what do I do okay I click the icon for the rollover state did I I'm checking everything turned out good Okay, home, about, services, work, contacts, all in black. The back is in white. That's all I needed. Um, do you know what I forgot? I forgot to turn the word uh, original on in the normal state. And do you think that mistakes like that happen? The answer is yes. They happen all the time. So I have to go back to the normal state and redo what I did because look, I didn't turn that little original word on. I don't, I mean, the client wants that on. Okay. So when I actually click that on, what do I have to update? Where's the update button? Yes, it's the little double headed circle. Boom. Now I have it.
Now I have to click the rollover state and turn that on as well, okay, and click the little double headed or double arrow circle thing. Now look, now I have everything correct. So I got to redo everything I did. Is that a bad thing? No, just follow me on this, okay? So now that I'm in the normal state, let's go to File, Export, For Legacy, one more time, click Original, Marquee, click Save, Let's make sure we're HTML and images, and now it's going to tell me it's going to replace things, which is fine. I don't care. So now it has to replace it. Let's click. I'm making sure I'm in the right folder. Yes. It's going to replace it, and then it's going to come up with all of these things and says, Brian, do you really want to replace all these? The answer is yes, I do. Okay. Now I'm not going to go show you what I did, but the word original is there. Now let's do the other one. Let's click this rollover state. Again, check your page. The original word is on, Brian. You're okay. I'm going to save the file. Look at how fast I was able to fix my mistake. Let's go here. Save for legacy. Click what? The original tab. Now this time we want to click and only, I'm going to zoom in. We are only going to shift select all of the user slices. So I'm going to click and you can see how I'm, that's it. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all I did. So I'm going to now hit save. I'm triple checking if I did everything right. And it has to say selected slices. Please don't say all slices. Now I put the word what? I actually add what up there. Do you, do you remember? Underscore over. Okay, because these are the roll over. What do I have to change here? I don't want a second HTML file, so I just say images. Now I'm done. Am I in the right folder? Yes. Now I click, I save. Now I'm going to close Photoshop. I'll just hide it for a second. Go into my um, page here and double check in photography. When I click it, none of the links are going to work, but the original, it's not going there. Come on. Okay. All right. So now um, let me go click that HTML. For some reason it wasn't going to there and there it is. Is the word original there? Yes. Do both of these match up nicely? Yes. Look at how the page matches up perfectly. All right. Now our job is to now make this work in Dreamweaver. So um, send me any questions you have. Okay. And um, you should be okay now, so go ahead and make your portfolio page, make your photography page right there, all right? Use my images that I already gave you with the original and the edited version, and then um, follow this movie, and then get ready for movie three, and I'll see you in movie three.